In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will begin this day. I thank you, Lord, for having preserved me during the night. I will do my best to make all I do today pleasing to you, in accordance with your will. My dear Mother Mary, watch over me this day. My guardian angel, take care of me. Saint Joseph and all you saints of God, pray for me. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Good morning, educators. This is Tina de Guzman from Don Bosco Press, Inc. Welcome to Salashana Books Chalk Talk Online. Salashana Books Chalk Talk is a teacher training program that Don Bosco Press, Inc. provides for its partner schools. Despite this pandemic, we continue to move forward and make the most of this challenging situation. That is why we are now bringing to you Chalk Talk and making it online. Thus, we call it now Chalk Talk Online. Chalk Talk Online, in partnership with UP Open University, presents to you today its sixth in installment of the Remote Teaching and Learning series. Today's topic is Assessment in Remote Instruction. I am sure that today's session will be a big help for all educators. And so, I will no longer keep you waiting. To formally welcome everyone and to introduce our speaker, may I call in the Executive Director of Don Bosco Press Inc., Brother Carmelo Martinez, SDB. Good morning, Ms. Tina. Thank you. And good morning, dear educators and friends. I think that it has already become a tradition here in our Chalk Talk Online series to greet each other in the chat box. So I can see now the names of those who have just checked in. And welcome to this uh, series of the U UPOU Remote Learning and Teaching series. May I also, part of our tradition is to ask you how you feel this morning. And so I'll open the poll now for this question. Okay, how do you feel this morning? Okay, we're happy that a good number are glad. There are also those who are inspired and excited for this morning session. However, we realize that perhaps because of the weather, it's raining here in Makati right now. Some are a bit gloomy, while there is this small percent, two percent of our participants this morning who are sad. Again, as we learned from our previous seminar, on mental health, stay on with the feeling and just just be aware of it. But we're happy, those who are sad and a bit gloomy, that you are still here and joining us this morning. And we are also happy to be in the company of glad and inspired and excited participants. Thank you for answering that poll. Welcome once again to our UPOU Remote Teaching and Learning series. We are all excited today because we are discussing this morning a very important aspect of the teaching and learning process. And if I may just share, 
this is the most requested topic since we started all these Chalk Talk online series last May. How do we know that our learners are learning? How do we assess during this remote teaching? And how do you do that in our situation right now? This is the reason why we are here today. Perhaps to validate what we have already been doing in the past or to review what we already have come across with before. But also perhaps to learn new tips and techniques on doing assessment in this time of new normal. We are grateful to the University of the Philippines Open University for partnering with us. This is the sixth in a series of seven sessions. And we thank Dr. Mel Bandalaria, the Chancellor of UPOU, for joining with us for these past three months already. So can you imagine how time flies? And of course, we also thank you, our dear participants, for choosing to spend your morning with us. Um, I, I have another set of polls. Anyway, one, one, just one set, okay? One last set asking if you have participated in the previous UPO Year Remote Teaching and Learning Series sessions. Okay, we have our, I think we will give loyalty awards <laughs> because there are already participants who have been here from the very beginning, from day one. They have participated in all the previous five sessions. There are those who have been with us for four out of five sessions. Yeah, I think, and there, there are also participants who are first timers. And so for all of us who are here this morning, for second timers, third timers, four timers, for those who've been with us since day one, welcome back and thank you for sticking it out with us. And welcome to our new participants. We hope that we will all have an enriching and enjoyable morning today. Also, uh, special mention to those who are coming from far away, those who are joining us. I think we have participants all the way from the U.S. We and 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 really, they have been attending our series, Doctor Mahan and. Sir Oji, Sir Oliver, thank you so much. Special mention. And of course, from all over the country, we thank you for being with us this morning. May we also invite you to our other Chalk Talk online series. We have the Christ Evangelization and Faith Series for Religion Teachers and Youth Ministers scheduled every other Friday. We are also already on the last two sessions of this seminar series. And I think we're going to have it this Friday. We also have an ongoing series on building family relationships and parenting. This is in partnership with the Love Institute offered through our Facebook page. So it's offered by a live streaming and it's every other Thursday. Then we also have a series on promoting mental health and building a strong guidance program in school and at home. And this is in collaboration with the Psychological Association of the Philippines. And this is scheduled every other Friday. We started it last week and we're going to have our second session next Friday. We are also happy to announce that all the previous sessions of this series plus the Google for Education series and the, the previous uh, sessions on CHEF series, Christ Evangelization and Faith series are already uploaded in our YouTube channel. We hope that this would be useful for you and your school and colleagues especially at this time of preparation for the opening of a new school year in the new normal. Once again, thank you very much and may God bless us all. It is also my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker this morning, Professor Anna Katrina T. Marshall. Professor Marshall is a full-time faculty member of the Faculty of Education University of the Philippines Open University, where she has handled courses in the Associate in Arts, Bachelor of Education Studies, and in the Diploma and Master of Arts in Language and Literacy Education. 
She currently serves as the Program Chair for Language and Literacy Education and the Director of the Office of Academic Support and Instructional Services. One of the academic support units of UP Open University mandated to assist the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs in the planning and development of UPOU courses and their primary instructional materials. With her academic discipline focusing on language education and communication arts, her research interests and public service work include addressing issues under affect in language learning, social media use in higher education, technology and language learning, intercultural language learning and teaching, among others. Her previous and current research engagements include UPOU's research projects on teaching and learning strategies with tablet computers in selected national high schools. So perhaps we can ask a bit of this uh, input on her research la later in the discussion. And advancing equity and access to higher education through open and distance learning. Professor Anna Katrina Marshall will be joined in later by, by Dr. Mel Bandelaria in the discussion. Friends, let us welcome Professor Marshall. So we hope that Professor Marshall will be able to get in. Yeah, there she is. All right. Good morning. Sorry, it took a very well. Uh, thank you for the introduction, brother. Welcome. Uh, thank you too, ma'am. To, ma okay, uh, to all the teachers, uh, curriculum developers, and even Moodle writers who are here in this session, uh, thank you for having me, for having us, listening to us in this webinar and even in the previous ones. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, share with you uh, practical tips and experiences since from the beginning of the webinar no? uh, to help you in your redesign of your courses and uh, delivery in the remote and teaching learning context. Uh, we commend you actually for carrying on despite the huge challenge as mentioned earlier. And uh, uh, with the possibility that you may have been bombarded with a series of uh, information and webinars already. But despite that, you're, you're carrying on. Today, I'll just share uh, strategies and tips from uh, research work of credible institutions and my and my colleagues' practical experiences uh, in assessing online. Hopefully, those strategies and tips will serve uh, as your options to consider as you prepare for the upcoming academic year. Uh, now I'll begin my, for my slide. Okay. All right, wait. I'll start from the beginning. Um, my presentation will just focus on three uh, aspects or sections, actually. I'll further clarify first the context and assumptions in which my presentation, the whole uh, discussion will be based on, and then we'll talk about the three purposes of assessment uh, and the assessment, corresponding assessment mechanisms, which you may do under each purpose, and how those uh, mechanisms or assessment forms may relate with the issues and concerns on academic uh, and assessment integrity. So simple lang yung, yung parts ng presentation natin. Now on to the first section, the context and assumptions. Um, this, I'll expand, I'll expound on uh, these context and assumptions in a while. Uh, but they may serve as a refresher, your refresher naren of the previous points uh, in the previous webinars. First is that 
there may have been systems in place ready and preparations done or being done as about assessment at the various levels of your institution. The next context and assumption is that assessment should not be separated from the other aspects of your course plan or your curriculum. And then third, it is a given that assessment design or redesign, which you may need to do, is highly dependent on the discipline. We recognize that. And it should be particularly anchored on the expected learning outcomes from the subjects or courses you will uh, teach. Now, the first context and assumption, it's pretty much obvious. It's a given already that one cannot do all the adjustments needed uh, for more flexible and even in the online uh, teaching and learning and the remote teaching and learning context alone. Uh, you will discover if you haven't uh, yet that there are aspects of assessment which should be set up or designed at the various levels of your institutions. Uh, beyond, it's beyond the course level already, uh, especially if you are to talk about the various levels of uh, assessment, various levels and types of assessment. For example, there are certain uh, support services which should be put in place for students and even for you as teachers, uh, especially ideally for the high stakes assessment. You know? uh, in, in our case, in New University, we have our own exam services unit. So that's one assumption that I'm working on uh, in this uh, presentation. But anyway, let's focus on the, the next two contexts and assumption. Second one, um, assessment is not, is a crucial part. It's not separated uh, from the other aspects of your course plan. So if, uh, if you see from this table, no, uh, it has the schedule your week or approximate number of hours, the module topic or the unit, your learning objectives or your expected learning outcomes, uh, the topics and subtopics actually do the gen, and then learning resources and learning activities and then assessment. It's true then during your face-to-face -face or traditional classroom teaching, and it's still going to be true now, uh, which is why we have separate webinar sessions on the various aspects uh, featured in the, the columns of that table. I say those aspects are the things that you need to consider and redesign for remote teaching and learning. Uh, now, with this table, as a representative of your course plan, uh, whatever variation you may have of it, the crucial question still remains. Given the current, you need to ask yourself, given the current limitations, as well as opportunities, what do my students need to learn and how are they going to show evidence of their outputs, which demonstrate the knowledge, skills, and attitudes they have supposedly gained from next academic year's lessons. Uh, likewise, you need to ask yourself then, how are my assessment tools related to the other aspects of teaching the course or the subject and implement in a way implementing the curriculum? Uh, now, with all the things that you need to consider or reconsider in your design, there's a need to review the different aspects. Talaga. What are your non-negotiables? Uh, for example, you may be familiar with this already because when we consider the goals of your curriculum, you know, we, we all know that there are really uh, too many topics uh, which should be covered. But because of various factors, we also understand that we must make smart choices as teachers, being the content experts, the facilitators of learning, and the mentors of the students. So our topics should be strategically, strategically chosen. Uh, but more so in this current situation that we have, uh, how are we going to choose topics strategically? Uh, Bates and Poole recommend that course content be structured in a, in a way such that overloading students should be avoided. And one way to do this is to classify your course topics into essential, useful, and merely interesting to know. 
another way to look at the restructuring of uh, content is through the nested rings by Wiggins and McTeague. This is from the backward design framework. Uh, this may not be something new already, uh, and it's seen. It could be seen as a variation of Bates and Poole classification in the pre previous slide, or simply a variation of the nice to know, need to know, uh, must know classification of uh, content or topic. Then, of course, again, the criteria for narrowing them down is uh, the question now. Uh, we want uh, our students to learn this topic and that topic because we know it would be beneficial for them in the long run. But this, the given the current situation, it's not going to be uh, setting realistic expectations. Uh, so we would want to establish our priorities. The next question really now is, shouldn't we reclassify our assessments as well? Uh, based on this uh, Wiggins and McTeague nested rings, the types of curriculum priorities are meant to have uh, corresponding types of assessment or vice versa. The types of assessment are typically meant for a different uh, set of curriculum content. But before I expound on that, I would want to ask you this first, the poll question, through a poll question. Uh, what kind of assessment do you usually do in your face-to-face, -face, the, the traditional classroom? At least based on your experiences the previous academic year. Traditional forms of assessment or alternative forms? Uh, I'm no way saying that one form is more superior than the other, right? In fact, they should be ideally supplementing one another. Uh, and that the forms of assessment will really depend on the out learning outcomes. Uh, but I would want to know lang. So let's see the result before I expound on. Okay, wait. Help. Ah, all right. So majority, 65% more or less, are still doing traditional forms, usually in the face-to-face -face classroom, which is understandable, really, because if we are to look at our curriculum, um, most uh, rely still on traditional forms of assessment. And it, well, it's based on the, it all depends on the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that we would want to uh, measure or assess. Uh, okay, now, the, just to clarify, the traditional forms of assessment refers to your quizzes and tests, and then the alternative assessments are the various methods which focus on demonstration, application of knowledge and skills, such as your performance-based or performance assessments, your performance tasks and projects, and even portfolio assessment. Uh, now, Wiggins and McTee, uh typically place traditional assessments for those con content which are mere, uh, interesting uh, and worth being familiar to, and then those that are important to know and do. Uh, for them, we can also, we can use, on the other hand, we can use alternative assessments for the essential topics or the uh, topics in which we wish for our students to have an enduring understanding of. But this one, is, this isn't a fixed formula. Okay? This is just one way to uh, decide on or to gauge what kind of assessment you have to do uh, for a specific topic or concerning a specific topic. Um, let's dig deeper into the types of assessments in a short while. No? Uh, let me proceed with the last context and assumption. That the assessment tool you may need to redesign is highly dependent on the discipline and it should be anchored uh, on expected learning outcomes. We recognize that fact, but uh, 
it should not stop us to adopt the strategy in which we try to integrate whatever aspects of learning competencies from one area to another, which means you may have to collaborate with other teachers, with your colleagues, even if they're from a different department. Why? Because doing so will help uh, students and teachers without sacrificing the learning competencies you will deem essential, you will deem uh, the most important ones to know. For example, in, in this table, you'll see the red one, uh, the topic universe and the solar system under the earth and life science uh, course in the senior high uh, curriculum, it's a core subject. And then the, the set of learning competencies from the curriculum. And then on the right is a different one. It's a different core subject naman. It's for reading and writing skills. And then under the topic, uh, techniques in selecting and organizing information and patterns of development. Uh, assuming you've provided enough content about for life for Earth and life science about the origin of the universe and the origin of the solar system, uh, and then for the on the other hand for the right reading and writing skills topic. Uh, you've provided enough content, content on the techniques for organizing information uh, through various means, the web article, infographic, your PowerPoint presentation, uh, recorded video lectures. One, how are we going to do or design our assessment if you are to try to integrate you know, these two? Uh, one example would be you ask the students to organize all the pieces of information provided or they have gathered if you ask them to do a quick research in the form of a graphic organizer to summarize the hypothesis surrounding the origin of the universe. So you will be able to tap or address the learning competencies asked for the earth and life science uh, course about the origin of the universe, but on the other hand, you'll be able to uh, also tap the, or integrate the competencies needed naman for the reading and writing skills uh, curriculum. And then another, you would want them to present with paragraphs or, or excerpts about the origin of the solar system and the subsequent developments in related studies. Then ask them to classify these excerpts according to patterns of development their outputs would be in the form of a topic outline. So that's one. Those would be uh, already a set of assessment activities targeting competencies for two core courses already. Uh, but anyway, so that's the last context and assumption. With all these, the question still remains, why do we still need to assess? Uh, especially in these challenging times. The easy and immediate answer I could have is, of course, we want to be able to, as teachers, we want to be able to uh, have the outputs to judge the students' achievements. But really, we need and we would want to go beyond this. Next slide. Uh, while Ward's study presented the generic steps of planning for assessment, First is the goal, in which we ask ourselves, like, what do we want our students to be able to do when they complete our course of study or even just a topic within that course? Uh, and then your information and then action. Ideally, especially if you're guided by the OBE framework, we figure out, we try to figure out what learners should get out of the instruction. Right? That's the goal. And then we, as teachers, we try to determine uh, how will we know if they're successful? That's the information. We want to, to know how well our students are achieving the goals and then possible factors that influence their success or failure in learning. And then after that, the last, supposedly the last step in the assessment is that we want to do that 
to go to the actual part in which we get the answer to the question that how can we use the information to improve students' learning. Uh, we decide what they should do to get to the point where they will be successful in their learning and to further improve. Uh, these generic steps, they will change really. Uh, but now our question is what will be acceptable? How can we balance the factors uh, which may affect the teaching and learning and assessment experience? Uh, definitely, we need to go back to our assessment purpose, uh, which is the second section of my presentation. In the resource, Rethinking Classroom Assessment with Purpose in Mind, there are three types of assessment purposes. You have your assessment for learning, in which you would want to determine the next steps to advance the student's learning. So you are assessing the progress and the needs of the students to be able to, to meet the outcomes, the expected outcomes. And then you have assessment of learning. Uh, as teachers, we serve as auditors. We want to be able to certify or inform others of the proficiency of our students. Uh, and we want to know uh, the extent to which students can apply the concepts, knowledge, skills, and attitudes related to the particular outcome. So that's what we are assessing. And then we have the third purpose. We have assessment as learning. Uh, why do we assess? We want to guide and provide opportunities to each student to monitor their learning themselves and critically reflect on uh, their learning and the next steps to do for them to be able to be more successful. So what are we assessing? We try to assess their thinking about their own learning. And uh, in a way, identify also the challenges, the uh, strategies that they use to support or challenge that learning. Sometimes, because of various factors uh, within and outside the control of teachers, we tend to focus on assessment of learning. Given the current situation and towards a much more improved teaching and learning environment, let's try to reconsider and find a way on how we're going to uh, adopt more of assessment for learning and as learning. I mean, if it's possible, without sacrificing the, the learning competencies that we need our students to be able to develop or to meet. No? And let's refresh first. Uh, these key purposes. Okay, for for assessment for learning, typically it's what they are our formative assessments. Uh, these are, according to Black and William, they were the first to formulate the formal definition of formative assessment. They are all activities undertaken by teachers and or by their students which provide information to be used as feedback to modify the teaching and learning activities in which they are engaged. Uh, Yale University's Center for Teaching and Learning added that these are your tools that identify misconceptions, struggles, and learning gaps along the way and assess how to close those gaps. These can include, formative assessments can include uh, students assessing themselves, their peers, and even the instructor through uh, writing, writing exercises, writing activities, quizzes, even uh, uh, conversation and class discussion. Uh, next. Right. Summative assessment, on the other hand, sum up what the learner has achieved. At the end of a period relative to learning aims and the relevant uh, national standards. They're, they are your typically uh, graded tests, assignments, performance, and even projects. But the period of time may vary. You may have summative assessments at the end of a module or a unit, uh, at the end of a term or midterm, 
at the end of a quarter, uh, you have a quarter or grading period. Uh, so that's summative assessment, which is uh, we commonly refer to as uh, assessment of learning. Now, the last purpose uh, is assessment itself as learning, what we refer to as metacognition. Um, there may be a few teachers who may need to uh, rethink their views of the teaching and learning process and how and why we should assess, especially in the remote uh, teaching and learning context and in, in, in an online learning environment. Because learning really should not just be a matter of, of someone knowledgeable or an expert transferring ideas from someone who is not. Uh, when we try to build metacognitive skills, when we address this, this metacognition concept, we would want to help our students build critical awareness of their own thinking and learning. Uh, especially now, we cannot be there for them physically all the time. Diba? So we would want to make use of our uh, activities and, and assessment uh, to help them be more responsible then for their own uh, learning. Uh, we want them to, this involves a uh, metacognition or assessment as learning involves designing assessment tools which allow students to make sense of information related to their prior knowledge and use it to create knowledge or therefore uh, create a uh, new learning. We should or we could try to train them to be personally adept at monitoring their progress, what they're learning learning, why they're not learning, uh, so that you can help them and they themselves can uh, strategize and make adjustments and even changes in the way they study and think. Now, what will be your role under this assessment purpose? I mean, you're still the teacher, but your role would be Will you will have a more extended role in designing your instruction and assessment because now you would want them to give opportunities for them to think about and monitor their own learning. So you give, what do you do? You give guided instructions so that they'll be able to them discover themselves how they learned a specific topic or how they applied a specific concept. You may need to use reflect more reflective questions or uh, ask them to do reflective logs so that they will report their own strategies which support them uh, as they face or address a challenge in their learning. Uh, what does this all mean? Why, why did I have to refresh or discuss Fresh your memories or discuss the three purposes assessment of assessment. Uh, because in your redesign, you not, there may be a need for you to calibrate your priorities. The question now is, should you still stick to uh, your usual assessment activities? Or you take a look at those existing ones, see what can be easily converted, uh, and or see what needs to be revised based on the, these purposes uh, and then address the how. The how are you going to deliver these assessment uh, tools, these plans? Which leads me, knowing the, the concerns that you may have in the delivery of the assessment, which leads me to the last section, uh, which is on uh, assessment integrity. Uh, research findings on the integrity of online course test, course uh, online test pa lang, by the University Professional and Continuing Education Association in the US suggest that uh, the potential for student dishonesty is really just only a minor concern for institutions offering uh, online courses. Why? Because most institutions rely heavily on the honor code. 
I'll I'll expound on the on our code concept later. But still, uh, they they're the leaders of the member institutions. They identified key challenges. And there are four. First is using unauthorized notes or sources, uh, unauthorized use of the web, consulting with others during a test, and having another person taking a student's test. So these are the four major challenges now. I would want to know, let's have a quick poll again. Among these four challenges identified, which concern is closest to the concern you have right now? with regard or concerning assessment. Uh, so while you're answering, can okay, we? I'll wait for you to answer. Oh, okay. So having another person taking a student's test you made at top, the top red, you agree. I know some of you may choose all four, no? You may agree with the leaders that these are the top uh, concerns right now. Consulting with others rank second during a test. Okay. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. You, you really are concerned with having another person taking a student's test. But that's... Uh, expected because this is online so i'm sure some most of you this the uh, half half of the attendees right now are wondering uh how would they know that it's really my student who's taking the test uh anyway i'll move on first with eco connect i'll connect the these uh, challenges identified as I discuss the different strategies and mechanisms for assessment, for each assessment form. Because there are other challenges mentioned as well. Uh, this one in terms of um, mainly the delivery already. First, another challenge would be identifying proctors who could be trusted, especially for high stakes assessment. Uh, budgeting for and having appropriate monitoring technologies. Because take note, this is for online testing. Authenticating the students, uh, the, the student or the test taker, and then the administration, the overall administration of the test. And then lastly, this I think is uh, the most crucial, the instructional design of the course itself, because it may be open uh, to dishonesty. Uh, one universally effective way, there I, there I say, to reduce the challenges on assessment integrity, integrity because is perhaps to address that, that one, that last concern on the design of your course, as well as the design of your assessment tools. So you'll ask yourself now, what, so what kind of assessment or what assessment forms should I uh, do for the remote teaching and learning context? I mean, if if and when the usual assessment tools I do in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom, they are effective. I mean, you you know, as teachers, as content experts, you know that they're effective. The question lang now is how are you going to transform them or convert them? But then again, baka nga, uh, we need to reflect more on that, on that answer na they're still effective and they just need to be converted. Baka there is a need for you to redesign. Now, one way, so I'll go to the assessment mechanism. One way to ensure lang or to double check to uh, the kind of assessment that you will use or you will need is to uh, refer, go back to Bloom's taxonomy again. This is to help you gauge the assessment form that you need to. And Sami, Dustin Sami from University of Central Arkansas provided this summary of common formative and summative assessments, which can be explored uh, depending on which of Bloom's taxonomy of objectives you intend to target. 
So let's start with the remembering level. He recommended exploring and doing the following. Uh, and if you will see, there for summative assessments, anjan talaga the multiple choice tests or questions. Up, actually, even up to the evaluating level, meron siya. Because it will still depend on how you design that multiple multiple choice test. So these are just a few. Uh, in the creating part level, you'll see it, that for formative assessment, he is suggesting that you try to adopt simulations, so case studies. But as a summative, it's more of a different set na collaborative um, assessment na and all. Uh, but take note, literature suggests that most of the time, if you go back to the nested rings a while ago, most of the time, the tests, the multiple choice tests, uh, true or false, short answer tests, they typically target the lower uh, levels in blooms, the lower order thinking skills, remembering and understanding specifically. Although, again, when we effectively design them, they can also target the thoughts, the higher order thinking skills, as shown here in this illustration. But anyway, that's just one way uh, for you to gauge the assessment uh, form that you can do. Go back to your taxonomy of objectives. Another way would be to take a look at uh, the continuum of assessment. This is still by Wiggins and Lee. This can vary in scope from informal checks to your performance assessment. So from simple to complex assessment. They may vary also in terms of time frame, whether they're short-term or long-term assessment. The setting that you will need uh, from decontextualized, generic, general uh, to more authentic assessments, and even the structure, a variant structure. Uh, the informal checks, of course, uh, non-structured, and then performance assessment, uh, the other end, is structured. Uh, the point here is that because understanding, it's not an instantaneous thing. Uh, it, it's not something that can happen overnight, especially if the topic or the concept that is presented is more complicated. Uh, it develops as a result of ongoing inquiry and thinking. So we should also ideally uh, think or look at assessments that way. It's a collection of evidence over time. Uh, and then we are encouraged to use a combination uh, out of these uh, continuums. No? Or majority, if not, if possible, majority of these assessment forms. Uh, academic prompts, pala, by the way, this look, take a look at it as a sort of pre-challenge prior to your performance assessment. So these are your open-ended questions or problems which would require the students to think uh, first, think critically, and then recall uh, uh, knowledge and concepts that you've discussed or presented as they prepare, which will help them prepare uh, response, product, or kung ano mang uh, paper and uh, output or performance. But anyway, these are just this one, the continuum of assessment, and then the going, the uh, the Bloom's taxonomy uh, of, of of objectives and assessment forms are just two ways, uh, two recommendations in which you can choose what assessment uh, form to adopt. But again, it's really up to you how you redesign the mechanics and how the administration of your assessment tools. But do consider the three purposes of assessment. And then there's the set of learning outcomes you wish to address. But here comes the more tips and strategies. Now. Here are the few assessment tools used in primarily in the open and distance e-learning context. But uh, in your redesign for remote teaching and learning, they're still going to be valuable. I'd like to know which of 
these assessment mechanisms are you interested in using the most? Just judging by the key words, the key phrases for now. Okay, I'll take a look at the result. Uh, and there, there are just eight, of course, but there, again, depending on the discipline, of course, there may be other uh, assessment forms. Oh, online quiz, Pared takes the spot. All right, well, that's interesting. No, good thing I, I put online quiz in, num in number one no? that I'll discuss. Okay, so online quiz on one hand and then e-portfolio on the other. Actually, each assessment tool, they require uh, a separate set of session, a work actually this workshop session. Uh, so maybe in this in other sessions of webinars, they can be individually discussed. But I'll move on to my presentation because I'll provide uh, strategies to lessen dishonesty, address assessment integrity uh, in, in the remote teaching and learning context. But this one, before I discuss this table, uh, I normally say this. I'd like to think that the number of learners who genuinely would like to improve, develop their skills, to learn through the activities and assessments that you teachers will provide them, you will design and provide them with, they greatly outnumber those who would just look for shortcuts by cheating. That, so that's my my first belief. And then likewise, if the students really intend to cheat, they will find a way to do so. Uh, well, be it in the traditional face-to-face -face classroom context or here in the remote teaching and learning context. Then again, it's all a matter of, of looking at it this way. Whose loss will it be anyway? If, and this is a big if, if you design your assessment and other support mechanisms for them well. But in any case, these are um, a percent strategies you know, for each. But here, if we are to take a look at each of the assessment mechanisms, uh, they can be used for the various purposes of assessment. But primarily, for example, online quiz, is primarily you can use it really for assessment for formative assessment assessment for learning and then for summative assessment assessment of learning discussion forums on the other hand it's more of uh, for metacognition for as learning and for learning it would be difficult to uh, design a discussion board or discussion forum for assessment of learning and the high stakes assessment, those that we really um, decide on the student's uh, final grade, for example. Uh, although it's possible. So that's why you naka check pa rin siya. And an academic paper, uh, depending on your design, but mostly it can be used as a final or a summative assessment. But as well, you, that's why you have uh, minor papers, right? Or short essays. Uh, they can be used for formative assessment. E-journals or reflective logs, primarily they're really for assessment as learning. I mean, from the term itself that there will be reflection. Uh, but of course, it will depend on the kind of reflective question, reflection questions or prompts that you will provide them. And then there's your live or recorded demonstrations. Ideally, this one specifically for the skills-based Given the current situation, this is the closest thing that you can uh, do uh, to assess, uh, to do fine, uh, final or summative assessment. And then you have your web or video conferencing sessions, 
which can be used for formative and summative assessments. The multi-part course projects, I'll expound on this later. And the e-portfolios, primarily they're really for uh, summative assessments, mainly because the overall product is a reflection of, the, of all the uh, supposed to be learning and insights of your students. So, and let's focus on each one. Start with online quiz. All right, what's the first side strategy or tip? First, there will really be a need for you to review the basic uh, principles of, review and observe the basic principles of test construction and uh, the strategies for designing effective tests. And you ensure that these are observed regardless actually of the delivery format. What are the examples of these uh, principles and strategies? First, you do not lift directly from a source, especially the ones that can that are available online. Can the students can easily Google search, or at the very least, you would want them, you would want to require them to conduct a mini or short research and at least analyze and synthesize, not just uh, copy and paste. Uh, what you can do also is that you can modify instead of directly lifting from a source the test item you can modify the assessment task your assignment or even your um uh, forum discussion forum question or guide to focus on a specific uh, local localized or recent or personal factors something that only they can answer from their experiences okay uh, next strategy would be that all items of the test or the quiz should be independent of each other to ensure that there are no hints to answers in other items so one item would focus on that's this one's pretty much explanatory self-explanatory uh one item should not lead to the answer for the next and then the third you make sure that there are no unintended clues in the items like your articles the a and the another strategy is you use question banks you use a bank of questions you give you give uh, each student different exams exam items or just have three versions of one of the same question i mean you're still going to ask them in your online quiz for example you're still going to ask them uh that for same answers it's just that you may need to restructure each depending on the on the batch of students who will uh, take the online quiz another set that's the first strategy is that you clarify your quiz protocol this includes your uh, question or test behavior what does the literature suggest about uh, this what you can do, first, you can set a reasonable and fixed amount of time for the students to respond to each item. This will prevent them from yung kanina, you to, to look at answers online or to source uh, uh, the answers from others. Ask their siblings na nasa tabi lang nila halimbawa. Mga ganyan. Another uh, is you allow only one item to be viewed at a time. And then within that one item, shuffle the uh, uh, options if this is a multiple choice question, for example. Shuffled questions or choices. So they cannot easily tell the other student, the other student, uh, the answer. Another strategy is prevent them from backtracking. So if they answer uh, item one already, they cannot go back to that. They have to answer. When they click next, they have to answer item two. They cannot go back to one, something like that. And then another strategy is you limit the assessment time, uh, the amount of time the assessment is available. So in our case, uh, what we usually do we have one, if, if we are doing summative assessments, you'll have one schedule for a final exam. 
for example. But you ensure that they're only available and it's going to, for example, it's in the form of an online quiz. You uh, design it so that it will just be available for the next three hours, for instance. Uh, although you need to consider uh, the resources of your students, if they have limited internet connection and the likes, no? in your decision as to how long or how short the assessment will be available. Another strategy is that for you to add a practice quiz with unlimited attempts. Not the same items, of course, same type of question items, just so they'll have an experience as to, okay, how am I going to answer a multiple choice question online? How am I going to answer a true or false question item online? Uh, how will uh, I answer short answer, fill in the blanks, yung mga ganyan. So that they'll have the whole experience of taking an online test, which is crucial because some of them, even in the traditional or face-to-face -face classroom, they may uh, have test anxiety already. No more so if, if you do it online and then they'll see a time limit that they only have 20 seconds. There's a timer in front of the screen, uh, the upper right corner or left corner of the screen. They'll, they'll panic. And they won't be able to focus on answering the test, the online test it's, itself. Now, the third strategy, uh, do establish at the various levels of institution. Dapat there should be system of assessment. Diba? Establish your institutions on your code and policy. And of course, you need to ensure that you communicate this to your students. Number one in the protocol would be you make sure that the students understand the instructions for each assessment task by providing them a detailed guide. So there's that detailed guide which you will uh, send to them or show them in advance, provide them in advance. Uh, and then if they have questions or clarifications, allow enough time for that before going to the actual uh, quiz. You explain what, what is the assessment for, what is the relationship of that assessment to the rest of the topics or the activities and the objectives, the learning objectives. Uh, because also this um, doing so, may serve as one way for them to get invested in their own learning. Because remember, the you have the assessment as learning. So help them through that. And then another, which you can include in the protocol, is that the honor code mentioned earlier, you include a statement of originality, which they could sign or click uh, before they submit a requirement, an assessment requirement. You, you include also in your course guide uh, or syllabus or house rules, online house rules, information on academic integrity and the consequences if they violate uh, the policy. So those things, uh, you need to prepare them as part of your assessment. And in a way, that's appealing to their good conscience as well, that they declare that this uh, work is not plagiarized, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, this one, the fourth strategy, this is assuming that you, your institution, your students, they have the resources. At, so you can try to explore online proctoring software and our online proctoring mechanisms. Uh, uh, so you do invigilated exams. Uh, this one, this can be done also through... Uh, the free uh, video conferencing and uh, uh, file sharing apps, so for example, Google. So you can also set this one up if you cannot afford to subscribe to a software. Uh, you just have to have the protocols ready for, for example, you use a Google document. The Google document will be uh, uh, the uh, answer sheet, the sort of answer sheet which will be shared for a specific period to the student. Uh, and then you call via Google Meet. 
but the setup there should be dual camera setup uh, so one would show the student and the screen and then the other the screen from the laptop or the computer will show the test environment just like the, my uh, environment right now so those protocols you can prepare as sort of an invigilated exam the, the challenge there is that if you have too many students uh, but of course one strategy would be you provide uh, limited slots so in one day you have to uh there will be for example there will be just five six students per time slot you can see them uh, on screen Although again, this this is this depends on the resources in case the internet connection may not support that kind of um, setup, may not retain the kind of setup. But also you can include that in your protocol. Now, if you get cut off, uh, how they're going to resume? Uh, another uh, is the fact that you try to which is a good thing that in the poll there are those interested to apply more uh, alternative forms of assessment you try to maximize them especially if they prove to be suitable or the most suitable even to meet the learning outcomes and then out out of the most common formative assessments under alternative forms assessment to have is you ask them to post entries in this to an online discussion board or forum but of course you have to be comprehensive the strategy is you have to be comprehensive in your set of instructions for a specific forum thread be clear in the kind of forum questions you will ask to prepare and communicate your discussion plan and what's what's a discussion plan uh, typically, the content would be the learning outcomes for the discussion that the discussion topic uh, have, the specific discussion questions, time allotted for the discussion, how long can they post, how long can they reply, uh, and then criteria for assessing the participation. So, in a way, you're clarifying your discussion protocol through this plan. You can also include how the students should post or share. Uh, clarify your minimum expectations. The second strategy there is you take note of the varying roles you and the students themselves can assume for every discussion forum. Uh, discussion forums or discussion boards can be used as simple learning activities and formative as formative assessments. But so you decide how involved will you be as a teacher? How involved will you be as in the thread? Uh, will you use that as a venue for peer discussions and even peer assessments perhaps? And so as a teacher, you just monitor the discussion. Just take a look at, at the entries and see if may, may nag away na ba dyan, uh, or if uh, they're following your your discussion protocol or will you take a more active hands-on role uh, by how hands-on as in every post or every uh, entry by your students you will comment or you post replies but studies uh, they mention that as teacher you can encourage and model the kind of participation that you're expecting by how are you going to do that by the drawing connections between the comments made by various students. So that tells them that you're looking at their posts, you're reading their posts. Uh, but you can also, you can use discussion forums or boards to identify angles or perspectives that have not been touched in uh, the resources that you provide them with. Uh, for example, a video lecture or, or a handout or a reading. But you also need to avoid uh, over, what we call over facilitating, because the students may feel that their posts or their entries, their participation, uh, they're not needed anymore, because uh, they'll just read and take a look at your posts as a teacher, which is in a way that will be 
counterproductive if we are encouraging them, if we are using more of formative or assessment for learning and assessment as learning. You also try to avoid publicly praising the a, a specific student's entry because it could discourage other learners naman to post. Uh, so there. Now, next would be for uh, academic paper, the third uh, form. What you can do is you maximize to, to address uh, assessment integrity concerns here. You maximize the use of formative assessments to help you gauge the quality of the summative assessment output, outputs. So you design scaffolded or linked assessment tasks. So one task will build on the next and confirm as well the previous ones. So what here in, in for, under this uh, strategy, you will recognize the writing style, language, uh, tone, how your students write kasi, through your formative assessments before you actually ask them to uh, write a longer paper, for example. Another way is to use discussion groups to become more familiar with students and their writing. So um, um, if you don't want uh, to design formative assessments uh, for under the strategy, the first strategy or the first tip, uh, you can just use uh, discussion boards or discussion forums. And then third, you make sure that the students know the difference between quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. And this one also, uh, this is also where your program or your department or even your, your school or institution can, can help. There, there may be an office which can focus on this or which can um, provide assistance in terms of monitor, uh, mentoring, rather, uh, so that the students will know how to do this properly but but at the same time as teachers you provide discipline specific examples of accept, act, acceptable forms of each because you may have now okay for for the math department acceptable yun ang ganito yung gawin uh, copy paste ng 40 words or less lang and so on and so forth and another the last no, no, the fourth tip would be you use online software this is again if you're if you have the resources to do so because this is a uh, one way to double check i mean you have on your end you try to do the first three but at the same time your uh, judgment is reinforced by the result of an online software as well uh, fifth you design application assignments authentic assessments, and performance-based assessments. And then have them submit part of or a section of the, the output as an academic paper. What's performance assessment? Uh, typically, in these kinds of uh, assessment, uh, we provide the students with the tasks. Then we pose questions or present a problem. We ask them to conduct research beyond the content that you already provided, beyond uh, the resources you gave them. And then draw on previously learned experience, uh, learned uh, knowledge, synthesize the find their findings, and then create the output or product or perform the tasks. So ganyan yung typical steps in performance assessment. Uh, so, for longer academic papers, this is how you can do it as well. Uh, which is related to, okay. given the current situation, this one, the sixth one, uh, avoid requiring the students to do and submit the paper in one city. Masyado namang mabigat yun kung isang pagsakan nila yan. Kailangan isulat and then isimit. Unless we're talking about really mature adult learners already and you've provided provided them with a guide. Uh, especially if we are going to use academic assessment, 
academic paper as a summative assessment to end the quarter, perhaps. Or So what you can do is, as, at the same time, you can ask them to report their progress on a regular basis instead. Uh, before asking them to submit the completed paper. Or you can also gradually build on the work by breaking uh, that potential summative assessment, that paper, into shorter formative chunks. So you link activities to the assessment tasks. For example, very much concrete example. Yeah. This one uh, is a practice in one of our courses uh, from a colleague in the faculty of education. And she provided an example of set of activities starting with watching a series of experiments. Uh, and then this one, the this one's the experiment. It's available online. And then recording the observation. She asked the students to record, for the students to record uh, their observations through, this is one, yes. She provided a worksheet where they can uh, record the observations from the video that they watch. Then that observation sheet, once completed, it could lead to the students writing the report while also preparing them to be allowed to actually do an, uh, the experiment, the actual experiment themselves. Uh, in the latter part of the, the course, and in this context now, assuming it's safer, it's safe to, to do the actual lab experiment. So this will do. But the whole point is that uh, the activities are linked and, and or broken down into more manageable chunks. And related to the integration aspect, another strategy is to explore how you may integrate assessments for the topics of, of different courses, so from one course to another. Uh, much like the example I, I gave earlier in the context and assumption part of this presentation. So this is another example. Uh, you have the topic exercise for fitness under physical education and health course. And then you have the starting points for the understanding of culture, society, and politics topic under understanding culture, society, I'm sorry, under... Uh, a different course, understanding culture, society, and politics. What are the learning competencies, Jen? Okay, for for the health course, the there, these are the learning competencies during the first part. Or no? You would want the student to distinguish aerobic fro from muscle and bone strength strengthening activities and relate health behaviors to health risks factors and physical activity assessment performance. And lastly, recognize the role of physical activity assessments in managing one's stress. That's for the physical education and health. On the other hand, for understanding culture and society and politics uh, subject, there's the learning competency we would want the students to be able to articulate observations on human cultural variation, social differences, social change, and political identities. How are we going to apply the seventh strategy na we integrate, try to integrate assessments for, the, for these given topics? Uh, one suggestion of an integrated formative assessment set, even though I'm not familiar with uh, proper muscle and bone strengthening activities anymore. But there should there could be a series of student tasks based on the stated competencies. So you can ask them to conduct an informal observation and take note of the kinds of physical activities of their family members, for example, and even their neighbors. Uh, uh, si kuya ba or si ate uh, mahilig gumakyat sa puno? Kumakyat ba ba sa hagdan? Si kuya mahilig bang mag-sit-ups? Uh, si ate mahilig bang magbuhat ng groceries? Uh, 
uh, meron ba si Lola or si Mami mag mahilig ba or every morning nagzoom ba? O baka naman ballroom dancing pa rin yung ginagawa. And then the younger ones in the family, mas tablet and or computers na lang ba yung ginagawa nila? So yung exercise ay sa ay finger exercises na lang. So those informal observations. And of course you need to provide them with a uh, the guide no? and how they can take note of the physical activities. And then you ask them to write the observation notes which they will need to share so that they can compare notes uh, with other students and then eventually conduct further research. Then finally, you ask them to write a short essay distinguishing the activities and describing the similarities and uh, uh, differences in behavior uh, guided by whatever rubrics from the topic of both courses. Yung the, the muscle, kasi remember, in the health, uh, in the health topic, health-related topic, you, they would, you would want them to be able to distinguish yung muscle and bone strengthening activities. But on the other hand, uh, for the uh, culture and for culture, society, and politics uh, course naman, you would want them to uh, uh, take note of the changes in behavior, uh, similarities and differences in me, perhaps in terms of generation and all that. Uh, you can include a reflective component and you may also ask them to uh, prepare a, a blog entry or a vlog if it's going to be a video as a component of, of the assessment. Uh, so that and encourage them to reflect on their learning and the meaning of, of those findings in their lives. And you can also ask them to keep journals of, from the observation to the writing of the essay. That would reflect their growth and for the whole uh, assessment experience. And, and all in all, ilan possible assessment tool yung pwede mong magawa dyan? Observation of the exercise, writing of the observation notes. So that's one. Uh, discussion forum, perhaps, for sharing and comparison of the notes. And then, then your academic paper or a short essay. Then your reflective journal. So, apat. There are already four assessment tools targeting uh, competencies for two core subjects. It will be slightly difficult for them now to cheat their way in the process, mainly because they are interrelated and linked. Unless for the whole SEM or for the whole quarter or the whole course, hindi yung student talaga yung naka-enroll. But, but, plus the element of personal reflection. Uh, so at some point, you will know that, okay, this student is, I mean, this output is not the work of my student because it will slightly change. Because now you're supposed to be, you're going to be familiar with the way they will write, right? Okay. Now, the next um, assessment mechanism is in on presentation or the demonstrations. Uh, you can adopt these strategies. First, this is gather information from the students and provide instructions in advance. Uh, what resources do they have in the first place? Do they have a device only for their use? Are they sharing that device with uh, their siblings? How about their internet connection? What's the internet speed? Uh, will there be alternative to this synchronous session, if ever? Will there be a, a series of sessions na limited slots lang? Uh, what will be the allotted time? Will you, in, in our case, because our students are diverse, so we consider rin talaga the time zones. So in your case, baka the equivalent, quote-unquote, of the time zones is more of the time where the internet connection is, in which the internet connection is more much more stable for them. So baka that's something that you need to to know if your students. Uh, now, if there will be specific slots, we will need to, to have sign up sheets. Right? Then the next tip would be create clear assessment rubrics and communicate these to the students in advance. Well, this one, it's true for your face-to-face, -face, for your traditional 
uh, classrooms and still true now. Uh, your rubrics din po kasi, especially in, in the context now, you are to deliver your courses online. The rubrics, if given in advance, can further help the students prepare for the session. Uh, knowing that these are the criteria for the assessment. Uh, provide a mock session. Much like the online quiz mock, the, the mock online quiz, this one, this lessens their anxiety uh, uh, in their performance during the synchronous session. Clarify, the next would be clarify the session protocol and a lot time for access or technical concerns, as in how uh, you expect all participants to behave and attend uh, uh, during the session and then address the technical concerns first. For the multi-part course projects, you consider this is point then same point as the academic paper. Uh, assessment tool. You consider splitting assessments which could lead to the final project or the portfolio. Uh, the concept mentioned the linked assessment or chunked assessments uh, or split assessments. So you try to apply those. If, because if students are required to complete multiple Imagine this. The students are enrolled uh, in how many courses or how many subjects in one semester or in one quarter, one academic year. If they are going to be required to complete multiple performance tasks, uh, answer multiple online quizzes or online tests across multiple disciplines and, and, and courses that can add to the stress that they'll have to uh, handle during the, the whole course of the semester or quarter. So, uh, the, in your assessment redesign, linking assessments may be one uh, helpful strategy, both for you and the students as well. And then another Tip would be explore the use of self-assessments and peer assessments. Uh, this one gives another layer kasi, of a uh, sense of purpose and being responsible for one learning. So yun nga, the third uh, assessment purpose natin. Now I'm on to my last slide. A parting tip. Okay. It's logical that we want to reduce when we want to reduce cheating behaviors or address assessment integrity in our assessment redesign. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just logical that we also include in our considerations the potential reasons or the antecedents for cheating behaviors in the first place. And li the literature, reviews of literature suggest that there are two theories kasi why, which explain why students are actually people in general, uh, engage in cheating behaviors. The first one is the general theory of crime. Uh, and then the other one is the cognitive offloading. General theory of crime, that's under the perceived opportunity to cheat. Um, either they lack the self-control and or that they, they have the strong desire to pursue the immediate desires uh, so yun daw yung explanation for uh, committing a crime, for cheating, for doing that shortcut. In the context of academic assessment, it, it, it relates to cheating as the product of the attitudes toward uh, academic dishonesty. If, and that attitude and perception towards academic dishonesty is linked to their perceived uh, opportunity to cheat, and their motivations mismo. Do they, do your students try to achieve you more intrinsic goals as in personal mastery and increasing their competence development, personal development, or are they more inclined to address extrinsic goals 
they're some uh, grades. So grade conscious lang ba sila? So all about the grades and getting uh, high scores. In which case, as teachers, of course, we need to be conscious of the kind of learning environment we're fostering. Diba? So that that perceived opportunity to cheat ay malesin. So you must you so that they'll be more motivated to address you for that this one this assessment is really for my personal growth. Kaya sa assessment redesign natin makakatulong yun if you are to explain sa kanila why why this assessment is being done. Uh, and then uh, we try to help the students lessen their tendency for cognitive offloading due to overwhelming cognitive demands. Uh, cognitive offloading, it's our tendency to use uh, physical action to reduce you know, the cognitive demands of a task. We rely on things, for example, the internet uh, to help us remember if it's if mainly because it, it will lessen our uh, the thing, our concerns. Uh, Mainly, be, why do we do cognitive offloading? Mainly because we perceive that our minds have these certain limitations, which is true, no man. Or because we we think we believe that the cognitive demands are just too much. Kaya nga po dun sa early early tips and strategies, I you need to consider na hindi lang this is the, your course, your subject is not the only course or subject that the student will need to uh, study for the duration of the term or the semester. Now, the tendency here is that if available yan sa internet and they, they're not that engaged and they do not, uh, and they perceive na mas, it will be more important for them to get high grades instead of for them learning, and then, of course, they'll have a higher tendency to resort to cheating behaviors. That's why, uh, ayun din, and sas pala, I don't, the parting exercise, I don't have all the answers. You do, actually, given that you know the context of your learners. So, I leave you with this question. That what other strategies in addressing assessment integrity can you share to other teachers? Your colleagues, even in your schools, uh, as they administer these assessments remotely, uh, in addition to what I've, I've presented. Okay, and with that, I end my presentation. I think I was supposed to just go for 45 minutes, but I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is my references. Pala. References, which you can just explore. And with that, I'll turn this over to Chancellor Mel. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Kichi, Marshall. Uh, so uh, again, I greet everyone. Uh, good morning, and uh, I'm so happy to be with you again. Um, as uh, introduced earlier, I will be your moderator for this uh, open forum. So uh, just a few reminders um, for your uh, question and answer. Uh, kindly type at um, any time. I mean, uh, we have opened the uh, enable the Q&A box uh, so you can type your uh, questions there and uh, we will accommodate as much questions as uh, uh, time permits. Uh, also to ask a question in person, you will have to indicate first uh, in the chat box that you would like to ask the question in person. Um, and then if you are acknowledged, uh, please accept the invite and um, unmute uh, your microphone and turn on your camera. So we can, we will be able to hear you, to see you, uh, and be able to converse with you as you ask your uh, question. And um, for those um, who will not be uh, asking questions, not, not yet your turn, uh, to ask the question in person, please uh, put your uh, microphones on uh, mute, continue to have it on mute, and your video cameras are uh, turned off until you are given the opportunity to ask the question in person if that is what you wish for. But otherwise, uh, if you uh, want to have the question, um, just uh, have it um encoded in our uh, Q&A um, box. Also, um, 
uh, this is also our opportunity. It's just, uh, we, we call it an open forum. And uh, if uh, you also want to share, um, not just your concern, not just your question, but if you also have some good practices to share when it comes to doing assessment, uh, in remote instruction or online teaching, um, we also welcome the sharing because uh, th this is the kind of platform that uh, we want to have for our sessions. So, um, okay, so um, the first question that we have here is uh, from uh, Jem Lin, um, ma'am or Sir Jem Lin uh, Langvido. Um, good morning po. Can you please suggest an online uh, proctoring software? So, uh, siguro, um, uh, Ma'am Kitch, uh, you can uh, probably uh, uh, share or describe um, the kind of uh, software or uh, platforms uh, that um, uh, we are probably using at, uh, U at uh, UPOU or some other platforms uh, that uh, you are aware of. So, suggestion on an online proctoring software. Uh, Nakamute naka naka ka pa. Ayan, thank you. Sorry po. Sorry. I believe uh, UPOU is subscribed to Proctor Exam System. As one word lang po, Proctor Exam. So if if there's a recommendation, that's something that I can recommend because that's, that's what we use. Uh, but again, take, regard, ito lang siguro, uh, strategy. Uh, regardless of the Proctor Exam that you will uh, try to subscribe to, no? Laging, take note na laging there's, there's should be a series of workshops for your proctors. Plus, pa getting your proctors and training them to do the invigilation. So, kasama po yun uh, sa consideration. That's the only yeah. one I know because it's something that we have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If I if I may add to uh, uh, what um, um, uh, Kichi has mentioned, uh, yes, uh, for high stake exam, uh, UPOU is subscribing to an uh, online exam uh, platform. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we also utilize other um, exam platforms. So, like for instance, uh, in our learning management system, uh, for other types of assessment, uh, we can already use. Uh, our learning management system in uh, Moodle. Um, it's, it's powered by Moodle. So uh, we, we, the discussion forum, for instance, uh, ePortfolio uh, has its, um, I mean, we can also uh, use it. Uh, it's it's a, an open access uh, software. So if you intend uh, to use ePortfolio, for instance, in your assessment earlier, there was this uh, preference. I mean, some of you expressed preference to use ePortfolio. So that's something that we can consider uh, there is a, a software, it's an open access software which you can use uh, for the type of assessment. Uh, online quiz, uh, even Moodle um, has that already. Other learning management system has that already. So I think it, it will also depend on the kind of assessment that you will do. And there will be platforms that will be appropriate to the kind of assessment that uh, you have in mind, whether it's a formative or a summative assessment or a high stake. Uh, assessment. Academic paper, madali rin natin gawa ng ano yan. Marami rin tayong platform uh, which we can use uh, if we intend to have academic uh, paper as one form of our assessment. So there is another question here um, from Sir Oliver Mineses. Um, what would you suggest uh, on how to design or how the grading system will look like under distance learning scheme uh, as compared uh, well, with the in-class or regular scheme. So something like the, the grading system, the grading system, um, which I think um, I think the, um, the basis here is that in most cases, um, the, 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 most of the weight, I mean, most of the, the, the majority, the major component of the grading system will come from the assessment. So would you, would you suggest that it will be different uh, when it comes to online uh, mode of instruction? Actually, if we are, uh, UPOU is part of the UP system, right? In terms of grading system, they're still the same. We still adhere to the same rigors, the same uh, uh, grading system for all our courses in all our programs. Taking note of the fact that the other CUs are residential mode and we are in the open and distance e-learning context. So that really shouldn't change 
your the grading system uh yeah. it's more of for each assessment uh, tool or mechanisms that you will do then of course the criteria each criterion for the rubric will slightly change siguro like for example if you are instead of yung class recitation if that's what you do in your classroom and it's a graded class recitation or even a group discussion tapos may reporting sa dulo if we are to do it in a remote teaching and learning context it's going to be i would assume in the form of a discussion board first that was where they can post their entries then of course the the, the rubric uh criterion for each rubric for that rubric would slightly change now okay participate participation na siya dito, post, yung posting of entries na and the quality of the kind of uh, post that, that each student will uh, have. Mas ganun na siya instead of kung ano man yung rubric ng pang residential. Yeah. So, pero yung system po will be the same. Yes, yes, right. So, uh, there's another question here from Dr. Maria Esteban. Uh, Si Ma'am, ano to, based abroad to, eh, but uh, she's been with us uh, since our uh, session one. So her question is, how do you assess students fairly when learning is done remotely? So not everyone will have equal access to technology or gadgets. So uh, the fair, um, um, treating the students uh, equally or fairly, um, given the unequal um, access uh, to uh, the internet. So how will the assessment be done uh, considering this situation? Yes. This is really, this is a very challenging question, but it's a really good question. It's something that really, that's, these are the kind of questions that we need to engage in because uh, the discussions that can come out of it. No, uh, But uh, what uh, I do, uh, at least in the, in my experience, because I, try to provide options or what we call tracks so for if 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 i have this um assessment requirement say uh will, which will lead to a portfolio so they will i'm thinking of uh, a course um, in 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 designing uh, materials for language and literacy education for example uh I know for a fact that this one student is is from uh, an island or something or a remote area, so slow internet connection. Siya. That's why I rely heavily on asynchronous activities at the same time assessment. And uh, so I have I, one option would be if you if you don't have this connection, then I will not you will not be required to engage in uh, web. Yeah conference or video conference session and but that's fine because you can do this and then i have a you have a specific uh assessment guide for this which will rely on submission bins so you will submit your uh, paper there your your short uh essay there uh then i'll give comments and we can discuss through the discussion forums but on the other hand if there is uh this set who can uh afford to uh, Be do web conferences, yes. video conferences, and I provide that option. Mm. Pero uh, um, in a way, same same set of activities, but different way of assessing them. Yeah. That I will not take it against this student yes. who cannot uh, have a video, uh, uh, attend a video conference session. Parang in a way, nagkakaroon ng mini classes, mm -hmm. class, uh, but of course, still leading to the same set of expected yeah, learning outcomes. Yeah. At the end of uh, the end of the day, they'll still be able to design uh, the materials for language and lit uh, classes. Mas yeah. mas ganun po po siya na. I would imagine it. It's in a way, it's easier for us in UP Open University. Because our students sort of signed up for the open and distance e-learning yeah. context yeah. set up. Uh, that's why all the more na baka there's need to redesign talaga your assessments for remote teaching and learning. Be precisely because of this na, okay, this set of students, nakikishare lang yan ng gadgets yeah. sa, 
sa kapatid niya or something. So, ano yung possible assessment ko yeah. na pwede magawa? Kaya, uh, personally, bak- baka naman po posible na mas formative assessment, mm-hmm. asynchronous uh, session, so hindi live talaga na real time, and uh, assessment as learning. Yes. Tapos, may pailan-ilan po yung of learning talaga na summative assessment na ma- baka maramdaman kasi nung bata, mahuhuli siya dun sa other students. So, mas ganun po yung, yung tingin ko dyan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, parang ang, ang, ang importante din uh, to point out is that the learning outcomes uh, will always be a major consideration because whatever, whatever the mode of assessment, whether um offline assessment man yan or online man yan uh, pareho lang yung gusto nating ma-achieve and that is really to determine whether our learner has achieved the learning uh, outcome so uh, there are uh, questions here from Ma'am Edith Kawile, Kawile uh, who is also a regular participant in our webinar session so the first question um, is uh, can you give us a uh, uh, bird's eye view or a simple note of a brief protocol i mean that we can give our students before go giving uh, the online test so what what are the usual protocol that, that we give uh, to our students who will be taking the exam online ano yung mga binibigay natin na all right um what i i do online quizzes through moodle because that's our uh, learning management system so there uh, i make sure that actually parang a month before the mm-hmm. opening of the quiz that quiz is already available at least the 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 main page yeah. the cover page parang ganyan, na this quiz is a 10 item yeah. quiz made that mostly a uh, multiple choice question and or true or false ko ano man yan na kind of question uh, which will be available from uh, for example July 30 so in pala July um, a month before August 30 uh from 12 midnight and it will close to uh, it will close the following day at 12 uh, noon halimbawa or hindi pala uh, 12 midnight 11:59 pm so what 24 hours pero sila pero minsan inextend ko kasi yun hindi lang 24 hours but anyway that's the kind of a uh, note tapos and uh the quiz is timed and you'll have 20 minutes yeah. to answer yeah. the 10 all 10 items May mga ganun pa siya. If the behavior of the quiz ay hindi sila pwedeng mag-backtrack, ay lalagay ko rin yes. siya. You cannot go back to the previous question, so you need to answer uh, each item and read the instructions carefully before you move on to the next. So, ganun pong mga protocol yung... Tapos, a month ahead, na mababasa na siya ng student. Mm-hmm. Hindi nila masasagot yung quiz and all that. Yeah. Because rin po, in our course plan, we can it's included there kasi yung the, the time, right? The week. Uh, they can say, well, this is for adult learners. They can say that, ma'am, I I think I may not be available dyan sa period na yan, na-open lang yung quiz. So, so then, the adjustments can come in. Now, well, we can, you can do this um, make up or advance quiz. I'll make it available, blah, blah, blah. Yung mga ganyan po. Yeah. So, yun, na ready na nila. Or pwede kasi din na masabi, masabi na. And during the 24 hours na open yun, anytime they can answer that. For, yun nga lang, for 20 minutes. Tapos kung ilang attempts, that's, mm-hmm. I forgot pala. Oh, so yeah. They are, they are allowed to take two or three attempts, sasabihin ko rin po yun. So, mm-hmm. ganun mga protocols po for um, yeah. the online tests. Yes. Okay, so, um, there, is, there are still two uh, questions here. Um, one from uh, Sir Jonas uh, Denso. Uh, it's all about using Google Forms. Um, uh, if you will recommend, I'm not so sure uh, if you're familiar with uh, the platform, um, would you suggest uh, the Google app, uh, Google Form, uh, for conducting quarterly exams? Uh, so it's a Google, uh, the Google form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it can be made po as a quiz, di ba? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so I'm assuming that the kind of test items that you will have uh, can be uh, 
transferred or can be the administered through the Google form. So MCQ, mga ganun lang ba yan? MCQ for our false and so on so forth. Yeah. So if that's the case, kasi yun yung mga options po sa forms, diba? You can actually. But because this is a quarterly exam, so medyo mm-hmm. high stakes. High stakes. Uh, there may be a need for you to uh, add another layer. I mean, if you mm-hmm. are to do this synchronously talaga, uh, and ensure that the students, kanina na mention yun yung isang top concern, the stu- are the students really the ones uh, answering oh, oh, oh. the exam? Uh, you, what we do for high stakes assessments po kasi, um, kung hindi doon sa through the proctor exam uh, software, mm-hmm. uh, dual cam set up using uh, G Suite uh, apps nga po. So, kaya lang po, that would require na at the very least, the students will have a laptop and or des- uh, desktop or, or a tablet and then phone nga for the second camera. Uh, so that way, uh, you can see na they're really the ones uh, taking that exam tapos the walang notes yeah. sa paligid and so on, walang ibang tao and so on so forth. Yeah. So yeah. wala naman pong problema yun kung Google Form tapos authenticated i mean uh, they will use their account pa di ba so in a way sila yun talaga pero yun po may added layer ng uh, security setup yes so kasi yes. high stakes po uh, so um another question from uh, sir ricardo uh, angel uh, what kind of adjustments modifications and actions uh, academic heads or coordinators should undertake to ensure assessment given by teachers are authentic and effective for assessment. So, parang ang ano dito is the, what, what, what kind of adjustment? So, from the action from academic heads uh, when it comes to uh, looking at or determining uh, the assessment designed by the teachers. So, yun yung well, your, recommendation, your recommendation. Uh since they're doing the, the teachers are doing the preparations already yes, uh-uh. i really advocate that they uh, complete their horizontal plan yes. uh, their horizontal syllabus so from the schedule to the module unit learning objectives uh, the topics and resources uh, activities and assessments nakalista na doon kasi po that's that's one summary that the uh, heads can easily take a look na okay in this module topic, this is the set of learning objectives. Uh, of course, based on the approved curi- curriculum, no? These are the learning objectives that are stated. Mm-hmm. Pero, like, looking at your assessment, ganito, siya, ganito yung plano mo. Merong disc- you can easily see, if you're the academic head or coordinator, you can easily see na hindi sila connected. Mm-hmm. So, so that's one practical tip mm-hmm. talaga. But at, uh, and at the same time, if your teachers have uh, completed their horizontal plans po kasi, or what we call horizontal syllabus, um, they themselves can can do the sharing. Yeah. Yes. Na, ah, okay, in the in our curriculum, yung what I was mentioning earlier na trying to integrate yes. uh, assessments and activities from one course siya, pero from another yeah. course yeah. then, if you can see that the learning competencies can be combined. Yeah. Uh, yun. So, pwede na sila, meron ng pag-uumpisahan din po ng uh, conversation mm-hmm. and sharing. So, yun yung uh, practical na way that I can think of and recommend. Yes, yes. So, um, uh, one more question. We're running out of time. Uh, any online exam app with shuffle uh, feature? Yung kasi kanina, I think you mentioned something about pwede mong shuffle yung mga questions, um, especially uh-huh. if it's a quiz. Oh, oh. So, uh, would you uh-huh. uh, yeah, uh, know of uh, an online exam app um, so we can... Uh, <laughs> Kasi my context really is for Moodle kasi yeah, Mamel, right? In Moodle, we can, di ba? We can um, okay. the question. So that pagpasok ng isang estudyante na magte-take ng exam, pwedeng iba yung kanyang 
especially if you're doing an exam bank, I mean, getting your questions from the exam bank, you, you have many questions to choose from. So yung estudyante, pagpasok niya doon, posible na yung ibang question na yung makikita niya compared doon sa uh, isang estudyante na kumuha ng exam earlier. So uh, ako din, my experience is also on Moodle and uh, that feature uh, can also... Uh, be done, yung pag-shuffle ng mga questions. So, yes, kasi nga, at, uh, at UPOU, uh, we, especially if they, these are just um, exams, even if it's um, high-stake exam, like a final exam, um, we are still using uh, Moodle. So, the last point here, um, uh, I think there, there's a, um, a sharing from uh, Jonas uh, that, yes, uh, there's also uh, activating the camera, uh, through the timeify uh, that me uh, and that the, there's there's also the timer and uh, we, we are also using that in uh, one of our uh, exam platform the camera the timer etc for especially for the high stake um, exam but for Moodle um, we can also do the time the, the, the time um, feature uh, kasi pag hindi mo natapos yung exam mo magko-close magko-close na lang yung ano yung exam uh, link uh, so you Kaya kanina, very important as mentioned by uh, Ma'am Ma Ma uh, Kichi, um, um, kailangan nakalagay ka agad yung, yung instruction na ganito lang ang oras that will be given to you in taking uh, the exam. So there's also um, a sharing here from Mr. Uh, Sir Oliver um, sa Google. Uh, ah, tanong pala siya, what other programs or platforms can you suggest? Uh, aside from Google Form, I guess uh, we have uh, answered that uh, question already. And a uh, sharing from Sir Ricardo, again, uh, shuffling can be done in Google Form. Uh, so those who want to try uh, the Google Form, um, then shuffling can also be done. Shuffling of questions can also be done using the Google Form. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Kichi uh, Marshall, uh, for the sharing. And uh, I, I hope that uh, we were able to... Uh, give some tips and as mentioned by brother Melo earlier this is really one topic um a major concern um of teachers who will now be shifting uh to the online mode of instruction and the concerns are really valid and um i think uh it is also um because uh we really want to preserve the integrity of the exam process and of course the kind of evaluation the kind of grade that we will be giving to our students at the end of the school year or of the semester. So um, also we have to note that whatever, whatever the mode of instruction is, this is something that we need to really um, think of. How can we preserve the integrity of the exam process, whether we are in a classroom, whatever mode of assessment that we are designing, and at the end of the day, the design of the assessment will really help in terms of preventing the opportunity how, how we are designing, how we are positioning our assessment in the whole context of the course or the subject will really put that framing uh, on our student on how they will behave in the examination or assessment that we will conduct for our course. So with that, I am turning over. Again, thank you very much for the participation. Thank you very much um, for your questions, your sharing. So I'm now uh, turning this over to Ma'am uh, Tina, I think. Um, who will do the closing um, uh, message uh, for this session. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, Doc Mel. Thank you, Professor Anna. It was yet again another enriching discussion. And I'm sure our educators really appreciate today's session. After the sharing of strategies, and now with assessment, we can truly say that we are ready for online or remote teaching and learning. Okay. Again, we thank everyone for sharing your time with us. Please do look out for our uh, other Chalk Talk online sessions. This coming Friday, we'll be having our Chalk Talk on Chef series, the retreat and recollect, uh, recollection. Then on August 6th, Another session for the Love Institute, Episode 2, Communicating and Coaching. We encourage all parents and administrators, teachers, please uh, attend this one. Uh, this is live streamed through our Facebook page. 
And then the second session for our uh, another series with Psychological Association of the Philippines or the PAP, creating a mental health program for school in this time of pandemic that is scheduled on August 7, uh, a Friday. Please do visit our Facebook page for more updates. Just look for Don Bosco Press Inc. And of course, you may contact your Salesiana Books account executives to ensure your slots. For those who have registered uh, for today's Chalk Talk online, you will be receiving your certificates in two weeks' time. And also, you shall receive through your emails a recording of today's session. And as announced by Brother Melo, uh, our other sessions in the other series are already uploaded in our YouTube channel, so please watch out for that. And lastly, please do accomplish the evaluation survey at the end of this session to help us serve you better. So again, thank you for joining, to, uh, uh, joining us today at Solishana Books Chalk Talk Online. We hope to see you again in our upcoming sessions. This is Tina de Guzman thanking you and until next time. education through quality textbooks.